Here. 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 Present. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Mr. Matt Reed. Here. Mr. Present. Present. Thank you very much. Um, we now will move into the public comment period, uh, which is a time when we allow folks up to three minutes to offer public comment. Is there anyone here who wishes to offer public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move right on to then announcements. Are there any announcements from members of the school committee? Ms. Fallon. Um, I just want to remind everyone that the 16th annual Northampton Adult Spelling Bee will take place March 30th at JFK Middle School. Uh, dinner served at 5 p.m. and the spelling bee starts at 6. For only $275, you can sponsor a team of three spellers. If you would like to support the public schools but you have no interest in competing, you can always make a contribution towards a team that does need financial backing. Um, I was one of the spellers last year along with Howard Moore and Pam Hanna, and it was a lot of fun despite the fact that we made an early exit from the competition. <laughs> um, so I would encourage anyone um, that's remotely interested to find out more about it and, um, and to attend even if you're not interested in spelling. Okay. Any other announcements from members of the school committee? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Yep. Just real quick, I just want to do a shout out to the uh, Robotics Club, which is a little bit more than halfway through their build season. It's a really intense group um, of really committed students and really committed advisors and community mentors. And if you're not familiar with their Robotics Club, they have a real nice collaboration aspect to the competitions. They collaborate with other teams that they're at the competition with. And the Northampton team, it's a combination of uh, Northampton High School students and also Smith Folk students. And there's a, it's a nice element where the Smith Folk students who maybe can't be a part of the after school component and the evening component, but are really interested in the club, can do work during the school day to help support the robotics team. And by doing that during the school day, they're a part of the team. Um, but I was able to drop in last week and I was really impressed with their work and I just want to give them a little shout out. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay. Hearing none, we'll then move into the next item on the agenda, which is recommended actions. Uh, we do have a consent agenda tonight that consists of uh, the minutes, approval of the minutes of the school committee meeting of January 14th, 2016, uh, approval of the special school committee meeting of January 28th, 2016, and it also includes uh, field trip requests, the JFK Wright Flight Program, going to the New England Air Museum in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, March 1st, 2016, the NHS, NHS baseball team going to the Baseball Hall of Fame and Games at Doubleday Field in Cooperstown, New York, May 12th, 2016, and then the Leeds fourth grade going to the Connecticut Science Center in Hartford, Connecticut, May 26th, 2016, and I would ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Seconded. Okay. Um, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Okay. Hearing none, uh, we will now move into reports and recommendations. And we have a report this evening from our student representative, Mr. Zachary Dietz. And I'll turn the floor over to you, Zach. Great. Thank you. Um, so, uh, NHS and the rest of the school district uh, is in their second semester, um, and everyone, is, this was a very nice week because uh, we had a nice four-day weekend because of two snow days, um, and Mr. Lombardi wanted me to have that. Uh, not only the students appreciated that, but the teachers also appreciated that because we had not yet gone a snow day. Um, and Smith classes, um, I, although the semester has been going on for two weeks, Smith classes have been going on for three weeks. So that initially led to some problems because, of course, as the end of the uh, first semester, um, you had second semester Smith classes starting um, and some conflicts. Uh, but teachers at NHS um, and the administration of NHS and teachers at Smith were able to work around that. And I would say for the most part, um, students did uh, get to take the classes they want to take um, at Smith. Uh, the National Honor Society Key Club uh, and the Northampton Prevention Coalition hosted a 3v3 basketball tournament at the high school. That was last Friday and that was a huge success. Uh, we had over 200 kids there. 
uh, which was about uh, 25 teams, they raised $170 for um, hygiene products, which are going to be sent to rural Honduras. That's in coordination with um, a group, the Glo Glo Global Health Brigade, Brigade at Smith College. Um, and then additionally, we raised $100 for the survival center and 150 non-perishable goods for the survival center. So that was great. Uh, and that event was uh, free for all the players. And uh, the, like, the admissions charge, if you will, was either a donation to uh, the survival center, the hygiene uh, product drive, or to bring a canned good. So that was a big success. The NHS band uh, is still doing their shoe collection. Uh, that is for their trip going to Washington, D.C. They collect shoes, um, and that will help them uh, get to Washington, D.C. That trip is in April. Um, and the shoes will then be donated to Africa. Um, if you walked into the NHS lunchroom uh, over the past two weeks, you would have seen um, several students going around table to table trying to sell you things. <laughs> um, that's like this time of year right before Valentine's Day. So uh, the NHS band, a, an additional fundraiser uh, for their trip to Washington, D.C., they were selling carnations. Uh, and those were going to be handed out tomorrow. Um, the Key Club was selling crushed sodas to buy a crush for your crush. <laughs> um, and you don't actually get the soda then, but those sodas are being handed out tomorrow. And then additionally, um, the junior class was selling candy bars. Uh, so all of those uh, fundraisers have been a big success, uh, and it's really great that students can take the initiative to be kind of become a salesman at school. and. Um, uh, kind of like build on their entrepreneurial spirit, if you will. Um, but those fundraisers are really great for clubs and classes at the high school. Uh, on March 4th, Caught Off Guard, which um, I mentioned last month, uh, is a, a student theater group that um, works to, to talk about controversial uh, issues or issues that might make students uncomfortable. Um, they are hosting, in coordination with the Key Club and the Northampton <coughs> Prevention Coalition, um, Dr. Lynn Phillips, who's coming to the high school, uh, and she's going to be doing an assembly for the seniors and for the juniors. Uh, Dr. Lynn Phillips works at UMass, and she is a specialist um, on consent in relationships uh, and the role of alcohol in the dating culture. Um, so her coming to NHS has been spurred on because uh, Caught Off Guard has been uh, doing a lot of work around this topic. And then the Key Club also uh, did some work around this topic. In the fall, we had a march against street harassment that was brought up by some students. Some students were really passionate about that issue and thought it needed to be uh, raised in our community. So uh, this is the, the progression of that. Um, and we're really excited to host Dr. Phillips. Uh, she is going to be showing her film, Flirting with Danger. And then that's going to be fo followed by a Q&A session with her. Uh, and then the, those assemblies are for juniors and seniors. But then any uh, freshman or sophomore um, or adult from the community uh, who wants to see that presentation can come in the evening. There's going to be another presentation at 7. Moving on to sports at NHS, uh, there are a few senior nights remaining for um, the winter sports. Boys basketball is Thursday the 18th, um, that's at NHS. Girls basketball is Tuesday the 23rd, also at NHS. Um, and hockey uh, is Wednesday the 24th, and that is at the Lasone Rink in East Hampton. Um, other news in sports at NHS, um, the boys and girls indoor track team is going to be traveling to the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston um, this weekend for their uh, divisional championships. Uh, <coughs> then the boys and girls swimming and diving team is traveling to Springfield also this weekend for their sectional championships. And the wrestling team also this weekend is traveling uh, to Central High School for their Western Mass Tournament. Uh, and then other sports news, um, on Friday, April 1st, the Northampton Athletic Boosters Club uh, is hosting their comedy night at the Log Cabin at 8 p.m. Um, and the Booster Club provides a lot of financial support to all the athletic teams at NHS, so that's a great event to support. Um, this past Wednesday, the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission held a voter registration drive at the high school. 
um, and that was during lunch. So if you, juniors and seniors came to one of the computer labs and signed up uh, to vote, um, and they said they got around 100 students, so I think that was a really great initiative. It was really successful. It's really fast to sign up to vote, um, but something that a lot of people don't think about. Um, then uh, moving on to arts, um, the Northamptons performed at the Silver Chord Bowl uh, the last weekend. Um, I think they were very successful. Um, the audience seemed to really like them. Um, the student production of Urinetown is going up March 10th through 12th. That's uh, student directed. Um, and then Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon will be performed on April 7th through 9th. Uh, that play is not soon uh, productive. Uh, and then the student written and student produced play An Itch in Her Teeth will be performed uh, sometime in May. So that's um, theater. Uh, and then another show at NHS, uh, not uh, this, in three Fridays, um, the NHS Improv Troupe Function Lust um, will be doing a joint show with the uh, troop from UMass Mission Improbable. That's at 7 p.m. in the black box on Friday, February 26th. Um, that's a great show. Uh, the target audience, we, we hope that um, high schoolers come, but also it's a great show for other kids, younger kids in the school district. Um, and then my, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, is integrated math, which I had mentioned um, last month. Um, and I do uh, math tutoring, uh, and so I got the opportunity to tutor um, a freshman who was taking integrated math um, this past month. And um, what I found was notable um, was that, so normally freshmen are just taking algebra, um, and so uh, I, I did notice that her algebra skills were a little bit weaker than a uh, freshman who is just taking algebra, but she did have a lot of knowledge about geometry and statistics, and from talking uh, to teachers and Mr. Lombardi at NHS, that is the goal of the integrated math curriculum. It's to um, take a more comprehensive approach to mathematics. Um, so I, uh, there has been feedback that students have been uh, confused and that I think is kind of natural because this program is like taking off a really big bite. But I do think, um, and this is just anecdotal experience from one student, um, that that comprehensive approach is uh, at least partially working. So I think that's, that's good. Thank you very much for your report, Zach. We appreciate it. Um, any questions or anything? OK. Next, we have a field trip vote, uh, and uh, Ms. Kuhn is here this evening to address it. It's um, the NHS band is going to Washington, D.C. on April 22nd through the 26th of 2016. Yes. Um, this trip is um, it's actually to a festival called the Festival of Gold, which we were accepted to by audition. Um, it's kind of a long, I, I rarely tell anybody anything, but we've been to the Kennedy Center a couple of years ago. We went to Carnegie Hall last year. We, we played at Symphony Hall. And so what's been happening is we go to a festival. If we receive a good rating, that op opens up other opportunities. We send out tapes. We get accepted. So this is kind of a, is that me? No. Um, a special experience. They'll receive uh, an hour and a half clinic with their adjudicator. They'll play on the stage of the Strathmore Center which is actually in Baltimore, but it's where the Baltimore Symphony plays. Beautiful, beautiful hall, um, fantastic acoustics, which is really a large part of why we do this, so they can have that experience of playing in a, in a place that's designed for music. Um, and some of the students who have decided to audition will also participate in an honor band experience there. Um, so they'll get some extra rehearsal in the morning and in the evening. Um, there'll be a keynote address with everybody there. There's a, a final concert, um, and it's just, we'll do some sightseeing. We'll go to a show while we're there. And we're doing aggressive fundraising. Uh, we've never, we've been going on trips every other <coughs> year, sometimes every year. We've never left a student home. We always uh, bring every kid. Um, through fundraising. 
So that won't be a problem. We're having a trivia night on March 11th. You're all invited at the Blue Bonnet. Oh, Not sure what night, what time it is yet. Jackie Leonard. Well, I'll send out an email. Um, and we, you know, we do the citrus sale. We did the shoes. Sold donuts. Um, many things. I can't. We're having a music showcase, which is similar to the Battle of the Bands, but I'm opening it up to other kinds of musical groups. Um, so that's the the gist of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so does anyone on the committee have any questions for this <coughs> trip? Because this is a new trip, we always bring it before the committee and have you talk about it. But sounds like a great opportunity and, uh, for, for the students. And they're very easy trips. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're very nice to travel with. I can attest to that. I mean, it's only gone on vacations with 40 high school students. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but no a lot of my traveling has been with 40 high school students in tow so. I just have to ask so do you I see it's like bedtime 10 30 and they're just in their rooms and you just hope probably before that um, well with generally speaking we have never had a problem um, there, are, I have techniques. One is to tape the outside of the door. <laughs> so if they open the door, we know they've been out. But uh, I, I haven't had a group that I've had any concern. The boys are on one floor, the girls are on another. Um, the doors, you can tell when they're opening and closing. We bring breakfast food with us so that they're not pay paying $16 for a bowl of cereal in the morning. Mm -hmm. We wake them up, they come in, bagels, cereal, that kind of thing. Generally speaking, we, I don't think we've ever had a problem, um, but that is one way of doing it. I could also hire somebody to stay up all night and sit in the hall, but that's a, kind of an added expense that I don't yeah. think is really necessary for these particular kids. But safety, we're on it. <laughs> okay. So, um, if there are no <coughs> questions, I would entertain a motion to vote to approve this uh, trip. Make a motion to approve the NHS being a uh, trip to Washington, D.C. Second. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank Have a great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next um, on the agenda, we have uh, the next in a series of uh, recognitions, and tonight it is Jackson Street Elementary School, and we have Principal Agna, and I see members of her team behind her, mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and I'm going to see if we can... Yeah, well, while we see if it works, um, I just want to introduce Mary Bates, the first grade teacher at Jackson Street, Mary Ellen Reed is the kindergarten teacher at Jackson Street. Kim Gerald, third grade, and Kristen McHugh is second grade. Um, I, I am, they're representing the whole faculty, and I hope I am as well. <laughs> and um, when we were asked to do a staff appreciation, um, we thought about focusing on one aspect of our school and one aspect of curriculum. And it's very interesting, Zach, that you talked about integrated math. Um, we do in the elementary schools what's called math investigations um, and I, a little bit of history to that before i was principal which is over 20 years ago i worked with jeff korstoff who was the associate superintendent at the time in looking at an initiative through turk on math investigations and there were some teachers in the district who had gone to a conference and were very interested in it and he and i plotted out how we could provide some training for those teachers. I think like many of our initiatives, it started at a grassroots level. Teachers heard about it, studied it, trained, and then came to their classrooms to try it. When I became principal at Jackson Street School, it wasn't either, it wasn't a have to in our district, and it, but it was being used in several of the classrooms, including um, Holly Gazy's classroom, who is a recently retired fifth grade teacher, who was actually a researcher with Turk and helped to develop one of the iterations of investigations. We are very committed at Jackson Street to this approach to math. 
when Jeff Korstoff asked me about it, he, I said, so what's it about? And he said, it's a constructivist approach to math. And I started to cheer because I had taught preschool and kindergarten, and that's the approach to math thinking in the early grades it was then. But I was always a little hesitant to even begin to think about how it would look in the grades one through five in an elementary school. So I was, I was really excited to think about how we could extend the mathematical thinking that investigations brings to um, our students through grade five. So Mary Severis, our tech integration specialist, very kindly did some filming around our schools, some of whom are, well, you will see in this. Uh, we tried to represent each grade or each section of the school in the ways that we do <coughs> math at Jackson Street. But I also want to say, I think it's all the elementary schools, so in some ways we're appreciating all the elementary schools' approach to math. Um, and so here we go. <coughs> It's important that students learn from understanding. They are taught to make sense of problems. And I think that is a hallmark of investigations. It isn't a rote memorization. Um, they need to deconstruct everything in order to understand how you get the, the answers. Ma Mary Cowie is our Title I math teacher. She's also a part of an initiative in developing math recovery as an intervention for students. And that is, as Mary said to me, you need to mention math recovery too. <laughs> because that is a very important part and it's very connected to the mathematical thinking that we have through investigations. This is, um, again, Mary Cowie has a morning math club twice a week. It serves between 35 and 40 students every day. Um, there's a little embedded video here and just before you play it, Mary, I just wanted to point out that m investigations lends itself very well to differentiation. And Mary is differentiating K to five <laughs> in the morning math club every day, 40 students. And so there's a little example of her differentiating for the, the range of students who happen to all, also be ELL students often, or students who come from backgrounds where they may not have uh, mathematical thinking as part of their conversations at home. So today we've been doing all games from our investigations math program. So all about adding and subtracting. We've got kids over here doubling. We've got some kids over here figuring out how many different ways can we take apart five. Judy and Ariana and Sakari and Ryder are doing how many am I hiding with five or ten. We've got kids over here doing five in a row, bingo, adding, different levels of challenge over here with making 20 or making 1,000. We've got a nine and ten bingo here, adding nine and ten. And what are you guys doing over there, Jade? Is that in a roll and report edition? So, um, if you want to get a chance to try other games, you can, or stick with the game you have. Right now, it's time for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so breakfast is included in Morning Math Club. Um, then in the early grades, there are examples of how they collect data and measure. Um, these don't have embedded videos, I believe. Yeah. Right. So just for you to see, I, it's hard for me to see right now, but um, how can you measure accurately and compare um, showing how they do measure. There is also, what do you, what would you rather do, a, a hole or? No, what would you rather be, a whale or an or eagle? Or <laughs> Sorry. Right, that's the survey and data. Yeah. That's the survey. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, kindergarten, right? Uh, first grade on the bottom right, we had the, the measure. measure. The measure. Uh, it was the half, we were 90 days into the school year, so it was the half, halfway mark, so we divided up measure tables and divided them in half and they all made pictures that had, they were symmetrical but that were divided in half. Mm -hmm. okay. Second graders, more data collection? Yep. We go to um, 
different grades and collect data on how many people have been lost, which is super accurate in kindergarten and first grade. And then fourth graders like to say that they've lost 37 people. Because they've lost count, and so they just figure a big number. <laughs> or they ask some of us older members of the They always say, we don't want to tell you how many we've lost. <laughs> I think it's important to see how they represent their data too. Um, this is an example of using a smart board as a whiteboard. Um, as it was pointed out to me very clearly by some of the other teachers that we also have, um, part of investigations has lessons that you can just put into your smart board. And it's, again, one of those things that really engages the students, they really like that screen. As we know, they're pretty screen oriented these days, but Investigations does provide that to us, and fortunately we do have smart boards yeah. to be able to and do that. What, sorry, what the, what the Investigations allows for them to do is, like today we were saying how many rhombuses does it take to cover a hexagon with pattern blocks, and they were able to, to manipulate on the smart board mm -hmm. the same blocks that they would later build with. Mm -hmm. um, at their seats. That's right. There is a video, I hope, to see a little bit of action. They're just a few seconds each, so. See the boxes? Seven lines. And eight dots. Does this give the same information as the Spanish form? <laughs> I don't know if you heard the last. Can you explain why? That's really a critical piece to, to explain your thinking. For this, we know that's an obtuse angle. Yes? Okay. Stand up at your seats. Leave the protractor on your angle. Ready? Here we go. We're going to do it again. I took it by shirt. Okay. Hand up straight. Hand up straight. Which angle is this? Right. This is your right angle. We know that because it can make a square, right? Here's your right angle. Now make it shrink a little smaller. A cute angle. Come back to the right angle. Now let's make a big one. Put it up. What do we have now? Up to this. What if we had one all the way down? What do we have? I think that sometimes there's a misinformation about some of more constructivist math is that it doesn't have a, a very good way of in assessing, but um, I think you'll see in these three little videos the aspects of assessment. Our game, so, so why did you feel a change was needed? Because um, we felt we had mastered the previous way of playing Ooh. and leveling up our style of play seemed to 
be in order. So our new way of doing it is that one of us has to get his his goal is to get to zero, and the other person's goal is to get to two. So say you were to pick up if person A were to pick up um, five eights, they're positive. Um, well, you can choose it's positive. And they pick a card that's one word. So I'll just use them as one. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Now, say you missed a negative, I mean, this is B, another card, just two thirds. Now, you can also say Mr. A didn't want Mr. B to score a point. Um, get a, a better card to explain that. Better card to explain Yeah, I'm just going to say that Mr. A <laughs> Okay, there we go. So the goal then is to is to get is to get the pins to one, but also to learn how to add and to do that fractions. To also represent how the mathematical <coughs> programming extends into the resource rooms that is for special ed students. We do more assistive technology um, and we also adapt investigations to support um, the, the kinds of learning that happens in the resource room. And I, I think it's important to point out that it is our core curriculum, but when we see students need other approaches, we are always open to providing those for students, in, both in the resource room and in the classroom. Um, the other part that we've been doing a lot of is RTI, and in math especially, the RTI. We have one Title I math teacher, Mary Cowie. She works with, right now, for second and third grade groups. We had a long discussion today about Ames Webb results, our mid-year assessment. Um, we did see a lot of gains, especially in students who were, who were on IEPs. It was very exciting to see that. Um, we continue to do sort of a mix it up math approach so that we are looking at ways to differ differentiate not only in the classroom but across the grades. And the, the population at Jackson Street is very diverse in its learning and thinking and being. And so the teachers are very committed to making math work for all the students. And I think that's questions, if anyone has questions. And thank you, David, for letting us use your iPad. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's yes. So my kids always talk about how much they love this I really am not entirely sure what it's for. It's um, developed over the years. We actually had a model for a while of actually having cross-grade mixing it up with and, and kids traveling to different classrooms. And we did that for a few years. Right now what we're trying to do is mix it up within classrooms so that it, in the end, I think it took a lot of organization and a lot of time to even just get kids where they were supposed to be and then also settled in with a different teacher and different peers and it, we're not sure that it was the most efficient way of doing RTI. So we're playing around with that now. I know that fourth grade is doing it and there only are two grade, two classes in the grade so and they're right next door to each other makes it a little easier. Fifth grade as we were talking today with the AIMS web results. Tom Chang is one of the fifth grade teachers who is also math recovery trained and he's going to do a mix it up differentiation for the struggling learners, the intervention group um, so it really is not an established model per se across, it's, it's where it makes sense and how we do it. But the kids do love mixing it up, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, I was thinking what you said, yeah. Zach, that holistic approach or look at math, mathematical thinking, 
I think we see that at Jackson Street, that there are students who are very strong in, for instance, geometry or geometric thinking, and then they may be struggling in something else. And so that in order to differentiate, we're constantly assessing and then having to group according to their skills. But the thing that's really great, I think, is we're away from the idea of tracking, and we're really away, we really are looking at how kids think and, and what ways they think best in, and that gives them an opportunity to do those things and, and mix it up, so that sometimes they're in the struggling group and sometimes they're in the practice group, or we also have extension groups, too, for enrichment. Just anecdotally, um, my son is with Ms. McHugh, and um, they have math buddies, and they were going to a UMass game, and I said, for math, and I said, I think that's great. I really hope UMass wins. And he goes, yeah, we looked at the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was great. Um, he was, and they, you know, they do so great. But, um, but he was really thinking mathematically, and I thought, what a great thing, like, using basketball and um, with a math buddy. and. Um, thinking all the time about it, so thank you, that was great. Yeah, and it crosses everything, obviously. It goes into sports and all the other areas that kids are very interested in. Mm -hmm. It's a language. Yeah. And that, that is the good part about it too, and I think it's sometimes it's a criticism of it that they say it's so language-based. Mm -hmm. You know, mathematical language is language. It's where we need to mm -hmm. instill that in students as well and ex help them explain their thinking. And so that's a good thing yeah. that we're doing to, to help them learn that language. Can I just say one thing about yeah, it? Please. I just wanted to say that I've been teaching investigations as long as it's been at our school, which is a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's not only great for the kids in terms of developing deep understandings, it's great for teachers. Mm -hmm. It's not a curriculum that's like, I got it, I'm just doing it automatically. Every year, I continue to understand in deeper ways what numbers are, what these operations are. It teaches, it's a curriculum that teaches teachers. Um, that's pretty astonishing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've had a lot of other professional development and professional learning communities as well, but the actual curriculum is interesting to me every day. Mm -hmm. I keep learning. Mm -hmm. And from the and kids, from the right? Yeah. The way they explain their work. Yeah. Do you have a question, Tom? Uh, yeah, exactly. I have a question for Mr. Baird. Uh -huh. Not really a question, just a thank you, and then just I'm thoroughly impressed by the by your presentation. Um, you know, I this is my world: elementary mathematics, mathematics in general. This is the work I do, and I am in the district I work in, um, and this is what we want to see. I'm just very impressed. Well, thank you very much for saying that. Any other questions or comments for Principal Agna? I just wanted to appreciate our faculty and, and staff at our school. They're, they're truly amazing yeah. scholar practitioners, so. We do care here. We <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Um, so, I will now return to the agenda, and we have a series of votes um, on, a, on three gifts, actually. Uh, the first is a uh, gift from the NEF uh, SOS Book Fund. And I believe uh, yeah, Christina Peterson is here to uh, present the actual information about the gift. Check. Money raised from the annual fund at $16,000 at $16,619. And, and uh, this year we broke up the. Um, the funding, uh, Smith Folk is going to get a check, and the Northampton Public Schools are getting a check. So, who do I give this to? Thank you. Um, I had three children go through the schools. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I had three children go through the public schools in Northampton, and it's been a, a few years now since I've been in the school system, and it's just great to s be at a school committee meeting and see all the wonderful things that are happening. So congratulations. It's a great public school system. Enjoy the SOS dollars. I'm working, <laughs> I'm working closely with Candace and um, Donna to streamline a few of the things. Excellent. Okay. So thank you very much. And You're welcome. Thank you to NEF again and the, all the folks who work on the plant sale, which 
I think is what raises uh, raises and spelling bee is coming up as well. Up don't as well. forget. Yeah. <laughs> so. We don't want to compete with the trivia for the band, okay. right? Excellent. Yes, it's true. The plant sale raises money for the annual fund, as well for as this, the, uh, mailing yeah. for the census. And the mailing for the census, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, could I get a motion to accept this gift? A vote. Motion to accept the NEA SOS book fund gift. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other uh, discussion or questions or comments? Hearing none. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the gift is gratefully Thank accepted. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have a gift from the Baseball Boosters, $2,700, and it's for uniforms and travel. Ms. Yes, this is a um, donation to fund some new uniforms for the team, as well as the trip that was approved earlier on the agenda to Cooperstown. Accept, uh, to accept the baseball booster's $2,700 gift for uniforms and travel. Second. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that is approved. Uh, finally, we have a gift. This is from the uh, Jackson Street School PTO of up to $10,000, and it's for a new greenhouse. Yes, the greenhouse at Jackson Street School is not in very good condition. It's old and falling apart. So the PTO is interested in pursuing some fundraisers to donate what they hope will be up to $10,000 to replace that greenhouse for the students. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, motion, please, Mr. Vice Chair. Sure. And uh, make a motion to accept the Jackson Street School PTO gift up to $10,000 for a new greenhouse. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Hennessy. Oh, okay. We have uh, <laughs> the third in the audience. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. It is approved. Okay. okay. Um, next, we have an item on the. Oh, oh so, I'm sorry. Sure, I'm sure. Gonna, uh, Ms. Minnick is no longer here, but I would like to say something she would say right now, which is that we just approved over about $29,000 in PTO and um, district club and NEF funding. And just so the community knows how much the community supports our schools, I think that's important to recognize. Excellent. So, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Hennessy. As the Ward 6 representative, I'll try to do a better job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I thought <know. laughs> you forgot to try. About, about 27 more years you'll need. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is a vote, um, and this is a request um, by a uh, former staff member, uh, Patricia, a retired staff current staff member actually, um, who re re has requested that the school committee vote to uh, allow her to retract her retirement decision. I know you've received a memo about this in your packet. Um, due to a change in circumstance, uh, she would like to withdraw that retirement request. And because of the timing, it actually requires a school committee vote to allow that to happen. I'll so, make a motion to uh, retract the retirement of Patricia Judd. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are there any questions or discussion about that? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. <coughs> Excellent. Next, we have a um, bid award for a new school bus, and I will turn it over to our procurement officer. For the sake of the new, new school committee members, we have three school bus vehicles that we own that do in-town transportation, predominantly special needs, but they're also used during the day to transport children back and forth to various programs that we have going on between the buildings. In addition to that, um, after this, which I'll refer to in a minute, we will have two spare vehicles that back up those buses should one of them need to be off the road for repairs or something. So we were able to replace one of those vehicles last year. We're looking at replacing one this year, and then on the capital plan, we have one scheduled for replacement or a request for replacement in two more years. We want to keep on a cycle of replacing these so they don't all end up around the same age and in desperate need of repairs. We're hoping by doing this, we're also reducing down our, um, the cost of repairs for the vehicles. The bus is funded um, approximately 50% by capital appropriation from the city and the other 50% from the fees that go into our school bus revolving account. So we received two bids this year and the low bid 
is in the net amount of $89,565,000 after the trade-in of two of our older buses. And we are recommending that the school committee make the bid award tonight for the purchase of that bus to DATCO Sales and Service of New Britain, um, New Britain Connecticut, in the amount of $89,565. Okay. Um, can I get a motion on the board? Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Reed. Um, any questions uh, about that? About the bid process? Or? I yes. just have, it just occurred to me, so that's 89,000 uh, include plus the trade-in for two buses? What is the yes. trade-in value for the, the two buses? The trade-in, we only got about $1,000. Oh, the buses okay. are, one hasn't passed inspection in a number of years, the floors okay. are rotting out. So we really put the vehicles in as a trade-in to get them out of the okay. city at no cost to us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, any questions about this vote? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that bid is awarded. Next, we have a um, vote that we take annually, and it concerns uh, school choice participation. And um, and I will, I think, turn it over to Dr. Provost to just make comments about it. Sure. Um, uh, as I had uh, pointed out in my communication about tonight's meeting, the uh, wording of the motion is somewhat tortured because districts are automatically in the program unless they vote to opt out, which would be opting out accepting students. Um, students always have the opportunity to leave. So this would be a vote to not opt out. <laughs> um, <laughs> or it would be a vote to opt out, and I'm asking you all to vote no. Are we ready? We, we literally, it's like a vote to right. opt out, but we want you all to oppose it. It's sort of a strange, right. yeah. Weird, weird. I'll, I'll just say that um, Northampton receives about 200 students, a little over 200 students um, from other districts, um, a net amount of about $1.7 million, which um, we have become uh, reliant on both for our annual budgets and for our long-term stability plan. So I would strongly encourage us to keep doing what we have been doing. Okay. So clarification to the committee would be uh, no vote? Well, I, it's it's interesting because you're not actually required to take a vote to right, but we have to a, opt in because right. you're automatically opted in. So it's actually so you would actually make a motion to opt out of the school choice program, right? Or we could not vote at all and we'll continue. Right. Right? I mean, that's the other thing. But right. I'm not sure why we revisited. Every, I mean, do we do we have to take a vote? We there is a report where they ask, have you have you affirmed your continued okay. participation in so we could just take an affirmation vote. Yes, like so go ahead and just do a, do a positive one and we'll just vote oh, in favor. Okay. Right? It's okay. fine. So I make a motion that uh, we as a Northam School Committee uh, continue to participate in the school choice program. Okay. That's very affirming. Is there a second? <laughs> Is there, okay. Any discussion about it? Any, any, um, Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No. Any abstentions? Okay. So we have uh, continued our participation in school choice. Um, next, we have a, um, a requested vote. This comes from uh, Ms. Hennessy, and it is a MASC delegate assembly position on charter school funding, and I believe you're seeking a, us to take a vote affirming that position, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Hennessy. Sure, I mean, I think as most of us know, it's a pretty highly charged and political discussion with respect to charter schools and funding. Um, and it's, um, when we saw Mayor Narkowitz's budget presentation, we saw the effect of charter schools on our district and the choices we make in this budget season. So I thought this, um, Endorsement voting on this really gets to some of the underlying issues that rather than just don't lift the cap on charter schools, which personally I think that's great to not lift the cap. Um, but this to me um, speaks a little bit more deeper to some of the issues that um, we should be talking about. And so I'll just read it for the public. Does that make sense? Because we all have a copy of it. So um, this would be endorsing some form of meaningful local approval that cannot be overridden by the commissioner with respect to charter schools a study of the social, economic, and financial impact of any proposed charter school or charter expansion upon the sending communities, local approval of the charter school budget, some meaningful local oversight 
of charter school operations, such as two representatives of the majority sending community appointed by the school committee to sit on the charter governing board, real mandates to accept and retain students at risk, charter finance reform, including, if feasible, a single state line item for charter schools rather than a single district exp expropriation, and finally, no cap lift without meaningful reform and full funding of the charter school expropriation amelioration account. So that's, we've all read that. Any, um, and would you, and are you making a motion to? I make a move to um, endorse this position and for um, Superintendent Provost to write a letter affirming that to Glenn Kucher, the MAS, MASC um, Executive Director. Comments or questions? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to that. I want to thank Ann for bringing it up, and I wanted to sort of dovetail into something that was in the insider that that our superintendent <coughs> used, which was about talking about how uh, at Bridge Street School, but I believe it's happening at all of the ele elementary schools. We're doing such a good job now uh, with the RTI, and um, he he gave this example of uh, where they're double dosing with intervention for kids who need it, and mm -hmm. at, at uh, Bridge Street School. Um, where both of my kids went um, with one group that was getting this double dose. They went up 62% in their math scores over a three month period and their reading scores went up 105% and that's just so incredible. I mean that's, that's not just helping these kids with their reading and their math, it's giving them confidence in the classroom and he also mentioned, the teachers mentioned that they became more active confident students and that just has such positive benefits all the way up the system and it's so great and, and I think the way this relates to charters is that, you know, kids who struggle with reading are somewhere between a quarter and a third of, the, of any population. And so I, I kind of wish that people who are, have kids going into kindergarten and are thinking about where to send their kids would think about the fact that our school system <coughs> is really taking all learners and figuring out what they need and how to give them the supports they need. And that's traditionally not something that the charters have done well. And so I, I completely agree that we need to be pushing, all of us, the entire community needs to be pushing the governor to, to, to properly fund and separately fund charter schools because otherwise, as we all know, they're taking money out of these kinds of really positive programs like what we're doing here. So that's, I'm just really glad you brought this up and completely support it. Any other comments or questions about this one? Okay. Well, I'll then we'll uh, we'll take a vote on it. All those in favor of the motion to affirm, uh, <coughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we uh, positively affirm that, and the superintendent will. Uh, yeah, sort of a double. <laughs> okay. Extra. Just trying to be up, trying to be upbeat tonight. <laughs> I was up late last night, so, um, so, so you'll send a letter mm -hmm. reflecting that. Okay. Next, we have a third reading on the pr third of what six readings? Mm -hmm. Okay, third of six readings. Um, we'll get there. Uh, proposed naming of the NHS digital marquee. Um, and I know you've been presented on this and it's been on our agenda and so um, we are just putting it on tonight's agenda as a reading and it will mm -hmm. come back to you for a fourth reading at our next meeting. Mr. Mayor, can I yes. ask just a quick question of that? Sure. Is there any way that we can waive the other readings? Is that, is that uh, something that we have the power to do? Well, um, I think certainly theoretically you can probably waive just about any of your rules with a vote of the school committee, um, it is sort of embedded in the rules of procedure that there's this, when it comes to naming things, and I, I guess it's designed to make sure that there's enough public discussion or public input, or I think that was the rationale. I'm not sure if six meetings is required, frankly. I sort of agree with you, but. I, I would offer if the goal is to expedite the process, we do have budget meetings coming up, and we could probably add readings to those agendas so that we could get to the magic number six more quickly. Okay. Because we're having double, we'll be going to double right. sessions soon, so we, that would be one way to do it. But I mean, we, you know, we can waive it. It could be something that the Rules and Policy Committee could look at as a way to maybe shorten that process. Uh, yeah. I think seems six does seem to me a little excessive. Um, 
I could see maybe three, but yes. I just I feel like this is one of those things where pe it's not on people's radar. And six months, like if, if after six months of us doing this, people don't get to complain that mm -hmm. they didn't know about it. But yeah. once we start waiving our own rules, it, it leads it open to someone saying, if I'd known, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have supported it. So yeah. I just, I feel like in this, I know it's a little tedious, but I think that the rule was probably written yeah. partly because it's about six months sometimes before people who are not a part of, they're not tuned in every month mm -hmm. to our school committee meetings. Maybe they just catch one once in a while. Um, so I just I don't know I don't I don't see the need to expedite it we're still gonna have to hear it six times okay I just for the folks at home this is the naming is actually mrs. Uh, late Miss Samalevich who was, was who it would be named after so um, who was a former uh, worked in the office at the high school for many many years so um, so anyway superintendent do you know of any uh, timetable <coughs> with the committee to get this naming done as far as uh, plans for the spring? Um, the, yes, the, the group that w first brought this proposal to the committee has a <coughs> naming ceremony planned for spring, and they're w well aware of the policy, so they um, worked backwards six months from the date that they'd like to um, have their ceremony. So I, I think we're on track as long as we stay with one reading per month. Okay. Well, we'll have two, meeting, two readings per month right now because of budget season, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I said we could do that. If, well, if there was a doing that anyway? <coughs> no, it's different it's agenda. Different. Oh, <coughs> now but you'll still have March, April, and May, right. so we'll. But it depends. It brings up your point, which is that it's nice for the public to have time to hear it and to. to, to yeah. And whereas I believe, uh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just have a question. I can't remember this. In budget committee meetings, is there public comment period? Yes or no? Yes. So. Okay. Any other questions about this? Um, so it's we'll just stay on this glide path of six readings, and then if if, so, if we want to, someone wants to bring it up in a policy setting to talk about it, we can revisit it at that point. So, um, okay. So uh, no vote is required. We've just read it, so um, we can move on to the personnel report, Ms. Walls Act. Yes, this is sh a short mid-year report. You'll see that we are continuing to hire substitute teachers, which is good news for everybody in the district. This is something all schools suffer with, is not having enough substitutes. So it's nice to see that we're still hiring people. Um, we had two separations of a custodian and an ESP. We have what we would call a promotion or transfer, one of our substitutes who got moved into an ESP position. And then also we have a retirement of Darlene Cunningham, who's worked in the district as both an ESP and a teacher, and she retired as of January. Do you want to move right into the business administrator report? Sure. Also a short report this month. Um, we've run the regular Munis accounting report for you, and I've given you some highlights. There's areas we're continuing to watch, such as special ed and the unemployment that we've talked about a number of months on this report. Are there any particular questions on the financial report? I have one question. Testing and assessment, what does that cover? See the deficit is caused by the purchase of some special ed testing materials. Okay. We ended up needing substantially more than was budgeted this year, so she's trying to identify funds in other accounts that she can move in to cover it. We had to make the purchase Good. early in the year. Thank you. And then next we have the gifts that were accepted during the past month in accordance with your policy. Um, from the PTO, the high school received two gifts. There was a $50 donation to fund refreshments for the ELL open house that they held. And there was a $250 donation for a speaker for Justice Week. And then the gifts that were accepted by the superintendent that are under the $1,000 threshold were actually both to JFK. From a Sarah Malzone, there was a um, donation of a used Yamaha electronic keyboard to use in the music program. And from Jim Rasco and Pam Dunaway, there was a donation of $50 to purchase some books for the library. Any questions or other discussion of the report? Okay. As the Ward 6 member, oh, I'll just you. say that I appreciate the 300. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done. Okay. That uh, then brings us to the superintendent report. 
thank you. Um, going back to Zach's comments at the beginning of the meeting, we are in second semester now, but it's better than that. Um, this is a very special day in the life of <laughs> elementary schools. It's 100th day. Um, and anyone who follows Mr. Kanata's Twitter feed knows that it was a great celebration at Leeds today. Um, I also need to report to the committee that our preschool is growing by leaps and bounds, um, which will necessitate a small reduction in force. I know that seems odd that you'd have to reduce force in order to accommodate growing needs, but we need to add a f um, eighth session of preschool, um, and we have um, really no contingency funds within the budget, so there will be a need to reduce another position in order to create the position for the half-time teacher we need. Fortunately, um, it may be done without um, an impact, um, a financial impact to the employee because there will be the opportunity for the person who is affected to possibly be recalled to that new position that's being created. So. Um, Wanted to let you know that that's happening. Also, um, our kindergarten numbers are growing. I don't want to um, give away too much of the surprise of next or the week after next budget meeting, but I feel strongly that we're going to need to move back to 10 kindergartens. Um, we have about 229 potential kindergartners at this time. I'd like to make the public aware that kindergarten registrations will be taking place March 2nd, 3rd, and 5th for all residents with students who will be five years of age on or before August 31st. Um, the registration will take place right here at JFK Middle School um, with a Saturday session to include countdown kindergarten activities for families and a storyteller. Um, I strongly encourage those uh, folks who are planning on enrolling to um, get the enrollment paperwork done early because as I said, we're looking at the potential for a 10th kindergarten. We're also um, needing to really think about how many choice slots, if any, we'd open in kindergarten and those um, early numbers will be very important for us for that. Um, so next, I want to uh, bring us back to Jackson Street School and some of the students that you saw in the video today. Um, I found out earlier today that there are approximately 160 pages of regulations concerning federal nutrition standards for school meals. Um, that came to me early this morning when the students in Mr. Ames' fifth grade class started tweeting at me questions concerning chocolate milk and the offer versus serve model of school lunch. Um, and I knew immediately I was in trouble <laughs> because I didn't know anything about the controversy between offer versus serve, but I should have known in a dichotomized world there would be controversies <laughs> on how, how to serve food. Um, so I, I thought that the fifth graders must have gotten their hands on the Code of Federal Regulations or some other um, authoritative source, and I really wanted to give them a better answer than the superintendent's standby of, let me look into that and get back to you at the next <laughs> meeting. Um, so uh, I did some digging around with the help of our, um, our food service director and was able to formulate a stance. Um, let, I said uh, to the students uh, that I was in favor of chocolate milk so long as it's fat free and meets all other appropriate and applicable state and federal nutritional standards for milk. Um, in my, my uh, studies, I came across a number of strange regulatory gems like two forms of fluid milk must be present at every meal and um, a number of other standards. So on the one hand, I was happy to see the kids um, digging into the issues and, and really um, exploring some of those, some of the facts. I, at the same time, I have to say I was kind of disappointed that I had reached the point of needing to consult regulatory guidance in order to offer a question, to answer a question from a fifth grader. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think the answers to the most important questions that our kids pose aren't going to be found in regulations. I think they're going to be found in here. And I have to tell you this evening that I'm really proud to work in a district that's filled with big-hearted people who go well beyond what is required. I think that's obvious from the gifts we, selected, we accepted tonight. 
I also want to tell you about some things you don't know. Um, I want to tell you that I found great spirit among two ESPs that I met Ryan Lee, uh, recently at Ryan Road School. Um, we had decided that one of the buses from Ryan Road really could use some more supervision and so we had assigned an ESP to ride in the afternoon. Um, I didn't know until I went to visit the school that um, another ESP had decided, well, if one is good, two is better. And so um, the other ESP had sort of volunteered to help out on the bus and two were splitting the wages. Now, I am the rules guy, and so I had to say, hourly employees are not allowed to volunteer, you know, and we'll have to figure out a way to pay you until we get the bus settled down, which we were able to do. Um, but that was completely employee initiative, um, much like what we saw from the Jackson Street staff today. I also want to tell you that I see great spirit in a teacher who sent an email to me and the entire lead school faculty at 11.40 p.m., on Saturday night, asking them for information about how they were doing implementing the district improvement plan. Now, teachers are hourly employees, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think it, it's just a real testament to the work that's going on behind the scenes, and I want you to know about it. I want the public to know about it. Um, I want people to understand that this is a district that where people don't default to the contract or the regulations when it comes to what they can do for kids. It's a place where they follow sort of an inner desire and a call to build a better organization. And I think that may just have something to do with the reason why we're starting to burst at the seams at our younger grades. And that's my report. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Provost. Um, new business. I don't believe we have any new business tonight. Uh, there's future business and meeting dates that I need to announce. Uh, the Budget and Property Subcommittee <coughs> happening on February 18th at 2 p.m. in the Superintendent's Office. And then we have our next three school committee meetings. Uh, the next one is uh, later this month on February 25th here at 7.15 p.m. And then on March 10th, we have uh, our next regular meeting, 7.15 p.m. here at the JFK. And then we do have a scheduled school committee uh, retreat which is March 11th, 2016 p.m. at 6 p.m. And that location has yet to be determined, but it will be posted. So with that said, um, did you have a question? Well, I was just going to say, if they're having trivia night at the Blue Bonnet on the 11th, the same night as our retreat, and you're looking for a location, <laughs> okay. Some pie. We'll, we'll take that under advisement. Um, okay, so with that, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second? It's Se it 9 p.m. Oh, well, no, that's just a guy. <laughs> Don't worry. About it's, it's a goal. <laughs> it's okay to beat the goals. Is that a second, Mr. Reed? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned.